hope I get the chance to travel the world But I don't have any plans So wake me up when it's all over When I'm wise Hello there And now I thought I'd do another movie review As you know I've done two of these already That being Blood Link and two a thousand maniacs, or the way I meant to call it. Why not the same director in the movie? Play me the colour red. It's not a bad one, this actually. It's too your typical blood in door, but I do actually like the story in this. I find the story pretty fucking interesting, actually. Where can I begin? You've got a die who's basically an artist, you know, one of them the Mona Lisa, tours pretty flowers, and he tours things, you know, he's an artist. And he goes to these art places, you know, to see if he can make something of himself. But like most artists, people just don't, not into his work. He could be anything, nobody wants his work. Not interested and don't show any fucking interest. He has his dear friend, he's a bit of a rhino, he's a bit of a dancer, so he wants to dance, you know, and basically she gets on his tits. <laughs> no, bit of eye time there, but basically gets on his nerves. Um, long behold, his dear friend accidentally cuts herself, and it he spills a little bit on the painting, and he thinks this looks good, let's do a bit more, so he cuts a finger, and basically they make art from her blood. Now you've got the idea why it's called Bait Me Bloody Red. So he goes to the art place, they think it's amazing, not knowing that it's blood, and he makes fucking millions, he makes a bit of this by selling artistic covers of blood. His dirt friends get sick of being treated like a fucking blood bank, which he would after a bit. He's like, have I got an artist or have I got a fucking vampire for a boyfriend? Out of rage, he passes a fucking head in, stabs her in the ear, and basically murders her. Cuts her up, and uses a fucking face. <laughs> I'm not making this up here. He uses a fucking face as a paint bus. A fucking paint bus. He literally mops a fucking face in the, the painting and turns a face into a, a paint bus. A scene, right? I'm not making this up. Which is supposed to be to stir thing. Come to toss being comical and pretty fucking laughable. But that's your film for you. After killing his dear friend, he's going to think, well, how am I going to make more of this beautiful artwork made from blood? So, well, and behold, he gets people, invites them to the house, whether it's women and so on, normally women, and he does them in to make art drawings from blood. People think it's beautiful, they think it's an art drawing, the lot. You then get a couple of, you know, teenagers, again like most movies. If you're buying being teenagers, guess what? I'm sweet 16. It's a typical 60s film, you know, it's how they portray teenagers in the 60s, you know, free loving and all this shit, you know, juve. And, you know, they, they're going on this packaging pulse. I do that, I like the packaging pulse. It reminds me of when I took my little niece, when my niece was only small. You know, you, you plug them about with your legs like that, and you plug them on the water. And they're plugging about on the bolts, you know. And they're there banging on the bolts. And on below, the killer just wires the dust, kills one of the dyes, rams his head for the pillar. I always find it's like a jumpy scene this because he then adopts the girl. He adopts her. And then you've got the idea he does it in. And what he does is stirs her intestines out and makes blood. Again, doing his day at Dorings. The dye has a bit of a bad temper and can be like moody in parts. You know, your typical moody dye. And some people want to know what's happened to these people who've gone missing. And you've got these people, basically, a couple looking for the die and the woman. He's about to kill another couple. They're coming in the nick of time and they end up killing him. Again, the artist does have a bad temper. Seems pretty bad tempered and seems pretty moody. But he gets his trumpets when the two couple end up killing our bloody artist. You've got some cops who notice the murders have gone on and they basically throw the plate in, in the fire. End of fucking movie. 
I had interesting one really, you know, paint me colour red. Is it as bloody as the other ones? No, but it still has its blood, still has its door. I think I started an interesting story. The character's one Denenso, it's not as stupid nor as dumb as they say the one in Blood Feast. He's interesting, he's dying, wants to be an artist, wants to get on top, but he's bit in Menko and side took it. You know, he's murdered his dear friend and he just wants to make art by using blood. I find it that interesting and that bloodthirsty in parts. Demi doesn't hold back in the door and the game was very noticeable in that era. Again, like I said with 100 Maniacs, it's very unlikely you see this on TV. And I imagine it was pretty well known as being a nasty for that era. Demi didn't again get that over the top blood, that plate looking fucking blood. But it is what it is, you know. There's not a lot I can say if the review's not as big as the others. I hope you did hear from me, but what else can I say? He's a die. He wants to be an artist. His dirt end gets in his tits, doesn't do anything the bloody wants, does his fucking dirt end in, becomes a psycho, kills people, gets killed himself. Oh. End of fucking movie. And again, you know, it's that over the top blood, you know, the sort of blood that looks like red prey, you know, different era, different time. It definitely was pretty bloody, but I always thought the story was like really interesting, you know. Again, it's reasons of why he kills these people. It's a guy who's trying to be an artist, doesn't get where he wants to go, kills people to become an artist. It's not really that much of a big review, but again, very popular one in its time. That again is paint me. The colour red. Not a bad one for that. Because I thought the card was like interesting, not as dumb as let's say the one in Blood Feast. I'll give it a four star rating. Not as deep, again, but it's not as bad as the other ones. Director, as you know, did a lot more bloody films as the films went on. Went a lot more juice up. He was popular in the 60s and 70s. And then he retired. The director I'm on about. And he just became a respectable businessman. I find it funny now that this director is now a respectable businessman. But going in the 60s, he did films, let's say, like Blood Feasts, 2000 Maniacs, and paint me the colour red. In, I mean, I always love to see the way they marketed them in bloody colour. Instead of being called Technicolor, they called it bloody colour. It definitely sold it, and this was definitely one of them what would sell it. It was juicing when it wanted to be. The story was interesting. The character had a bad tempo. It was definitely a giveaway. He was side toxic. You do get the same cop. You played in Blood Feast, not the one who is in Blood Feast and 2000 Maniacs, the one that played his partner. And I was looking at it as, is he the same character? Because in this he played a cop. But again, it's not date, but it's not as bad, and the acting is bearable, and not as shitty and old chappy acting as it was in the other two. I'd be asked to talk of them, and I'd probably think of other films, and other other films I'd be interested in, into them. Have a good one, because I'm going to paint a nice colour. It's called, I'm having a bloody rest. Hard working day, why not? See you later.